Hello everyone, this is Rushida. Welcome to my channel. My today's video is going to be on gradient descent algorithm, which is a very important topic in machine learning. A series of machine learning and deep learning videos is never complete without having a discussion on gradient descent. In this video, I will give you a very short recap about the basic machine learning and cost function because that will be necessary to enter into the gradient descent talk then details of gradient descent algorithm, and finally, the types of gradient descent. Gradient descent is the optimization algorithm. It optimizes the parameters in machine learning to improve the prediction accuracy. So let's look at the most basic formula for machine learning. If you watched my video on linear regression, I explained how this formula works for prediction. And in my neural network video, I explained how this simple formula can develop much more complex algorithm. Just to adjust with the machine learning language, I'm replacing A with W1 and B with W0, where W1 and W0 are the model parameters, we can call them weights as well, that gradient descent algorithm optimizes. Another key component for the gradient descent algorithm is going to be cost function which represents the discrepancy between the predicted output and the actual output. To dive deeper into the gradient descent algorithm, we need to express this cost function as a mathematical expression. The same formula W1x plus W0, we are calling it Y predicted because we will use it to predict the label. Then we will use the actual label and the predicted label to calculate the loss. So if you take one training example, and deduct the predicted label from the actual label, you get the loss. If you take the square root of the loss to cancel out the negatives and then divide it by m, which is the length of the training data set, that means the number of training data, that becomes the cost function. So the cost function is the average loss of entire training data set. I am showing the simple cost function here. In my two last videos, I explained all different cost function options for regression and classification models. So I have the link in the description box below. Please feel free to check. The purpose of the model training is to minimize the cost function. So the lower the cost function, the better your model is. As you can see in this image, where x-axis represents the weight and y-axis represents the cost function. And this is pretty much the shape of the graph. But the graph is not always that smooth, and the gradient descent algorithm calculates the gradient of the cost function. You can see this black ball. The black ball is the initial weight, and this is the position of the initial cost function. And then it should keep going down step by step to the minimum level, where the cost function is the minimum. So usually the gradient descent moves in the opposite direction of the gradient. And with each iteration, gradient descent needs to minimize the cost to move towards the convergence. So when the cost function reach its minimum, that means our model converged. In other words, model training is done. The whole purpose of gradient descent algorithm is to bring the cost function down as low as possible. This whole process works in two steps. Step one, the gradient computation, which is the first order derivative, the cost function with respect to the weights. Second step is to choose a correct step size towards the convergence. If you have a look at this graph, this cost function, this black ball, it goes down to the minimum step by step. It takes several steps. So we need to choose a correct step size for the gradient descent to efficiently go to the minimum location. Step size is also called learning rate, often denoted as alpha. So the gradient becomes alpha times partial differentiation of cost function with respect to W or weight. These pictures show what happens if you do not choose the correct step size. If the step size is too small like the first one, the step is too little and it takes too long and it becomes computationally expensive for the model to converge. If the learning rate or step size is too big, then it keeps overshooting like this. It can keep overshooting like this forever. So our optimized W0 is going to be the existing W0 minus the gradient. And W1 becomes the existing W1 minus the gradient. And it usually takes a number of epochs to converge. And one more thing to remember 
is that the graph is very smooth here. In the real world, the graph is actually not that smooth. It is quite bumpy. In this three-dimensional graph, you can see there are multiple dips here, right? With most real-world data set, the gradient descent graph actually will look like this. A more simplified version you can see in this two-dimensional graph here. Yeah, this is showing only two bumps. If you start here in this red dot, then most likely your model will converge somewhere here, which is a local minimum, and that's not your best model. Your best model should converge in the global minimum, in the lowest point. That means your model convergence does not always mean that it converges in the global minimum. There are multiple ways to make sure that your model convergence happens in the global minimum. That's not the scope of this video. I can just share one trick that is you can start in multiple positions. That means you can initiate with different weights and try with different weights. That's one way. And we will talk about different types of gradient descent in this video. You will find some of the solutions there. So there are multiple types of gradient descent. One is batch gradient descent. Calculate the loss for each training example and update the parameters using average gradient of the entire training set. Batch gradient descent guarantees convergence to the global minimum, but it is computationally expensive and can be very slow. Then stochastic gradient descent. It takes one training example at a time and updates the model's parameters based on the gradient of that one training example. So this one is computationally efficient and much faster, but may converge to the local minimum. And the final one will be mini batch gradient descent. This one updates the parameters using the average gradient of a small subset of the training set. So this is a middle ground of the batch gradient descent and the stochastic gradient descent, and the most commonly used method. It is less noisy than stochastic and more efficient than batch gradient descent and can converge to an optimum solution. That's all about gradient descent I wanted to share with you today. Uh, if you found this video helpful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.